now we will see the process of protein translation in the cells. So we know that this uh, central dogma starts from replication of DNA. DNA replicates into multiple copies. Then second step is the transcription of DNA into RNA. And we have already known there are different types of RNAs. So we will deal today with the one type of RNA that is messenger RNA. But we must know the other types of RNA also. Apart from messenger RNA, transfer RNA, that is non-coding RNA, also plays an important role in protein synthesis. Third is ribosomal RNA, that is also non-coding RNA. But apart from these two non-coding RNAs, that is ribosomal RNA and transfer RNA, there are huge number of recently identified non-coding RNAs. That includes small non-coding RNAs, and the examples of small non-coding RNAs are SNO RNAs, SN RNAs, SNO means small nuclear RNA, SN means small nuclear RNA, SRP, uh, signal recognition particle RNA, YRNA, microRNA, and so on. On the other hand, there is another class of non-coding RNAs, that is long non-coding RNAs. So these long non-coding RNAs also play important role in the cells, especially they play very important role in brain development, metabolism, and many diseases, including cancers. So we will see this process of protein translation in detail. So protein synthesis or protein translation can be divided into three parts. So first part is the initiation part. And we all know that this protein synthesis or translation takes place in ribosomes. And we also know that ribosomes are divided into two subunits. One is smaller subunit and the other is larger subunit. When these two subunits, they combine together and some other proteins, they help in combining and they collectively form an initiation complex. So this complex is the first step in the process of protein synthesis. So after this complex is formed, the molecule of messenger RNA, it binds with the smaller subunit. And we also know that the larger subunit of ribosome has three specific sites. The first site is A site and it is generally called as acceptor site where transfer RNAs first come and bind at this site. The second site is P site and the last one is the E site that is known as the exit site. The transfer RNA that has binded with the A site moves to the P site and finally it exits from the E site. So we have seen clearly that ribosome has a main role in the protein synthesis. So we will see that when messenger RNA binds with the smaller subunit of ribosome, it recognizes a special three nucleotide codon. So three nucleotides uh, that is attached at one side of transfer RNA is called codon. And that codon is complementary to the sequence of messenger RNA. So generally, the first codon that recognizes the site on messenger RNA is called start codon. 
and the sequence of start codon is written here, we can see here, is AUG on messenger RNA and the complementary sequence that is on one side of transfer RNA will be complementary of AUG means A will bind with U, U will bind with A and G will bind with C. So it is complementary and it binds here and after this the transfer RNA will move to the exit site and we can also see that transfer RNA has a one amino acid on the opposite side that is methionine because methionine is the codon that match with the start codon. So the first codon always is the methionine. So this is the first step in the protein translation or protein synthesis. So the second step is elongation. So the, this step that we have seen is repeated many times and one transfer RNA is it binds with the complementary sequence of the codon on messenger RNA then it moves and exit from the E site of larger subunit of ribosome then when it exit then you can see second transfer RNA it will come and attach with the second codon of messenger RNA at A site. So again we can see here that two transfer RNAs they have been bounded one has specific uh, amino acid and when the second transfer RNA will come that amino acid will bind with the amino acid of the second transfer RNA through a peptide bond. So peptide bond is the bond between two amino acids. So this process will continue until the chain and chain will be elongated. Then third, fourth, fifth transfer RNA will come and the chain of amino acid will be elongated. And it will be elongated until the whole of the protein molecule is synthesized. So this is the elongation process and the main feature of elongation process is that formation of peptide bonds between the adding amino acids. So the last step of protein synthesis is termination process and in the termination process we know that the process will stop when the last codon that is the stop codon will reach here at the A site and the specific transfer RNA will come here and bind at the A site and this will lead to the termination of the process of protein synthesis. And when this transfer RNA is come here and termination process will start and it leads to the segregation of smaller subunit and larger subunit of the ribosome. And when these two parts separated, the protein that is formed is also liberated and further post translation modifications and some other processes will take place and this protein will be folded in a specific manner so that it could perform a very specific functions. So we have seen here the process of protein synthesis. It comprises of three steps, initiation step, elongation and termination. So here we can see is the table of genetic code. As we have seen in the previous slide that transfer RNA came and it binds with a specific three nucleotides that is called as codons. So here is a table we can see is the first base, is the second base and is the third base. 
so it means that we can see u c a g and we can very quickly determine which code will code for which amino acid for example here is u first base here is the u second base and here is the u third base so three u's will combine to form phenyl alanine here is the two stop codons and this is the third one and a u g is the start codon so we take last example here c a g c from here a from here and g from here it uh, codon will be a c a g and it codes for g l n means glycine so it means we can uh, determine any of the amino acid that is coded by the three letter codons